Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Caleb. Today I want to introduce the concept of binary heaps. First we want to start with the idea of a priority queue. The idea here is that I want a queue, but instead of being first in, first out, I want to have it ordered by priority. So that we're going to take the thing that has the highest priority rather than the thing that came in first. We could implement this as a list, but that has efficiency issues. Whether I choose to use an array or a linked list, whether I choose to make the thing ordered or unordered, in general, at least one of insertion and deletion is going to be big O of n. Generally speaking, if we do it wisely, we can make one of those constant time and the other one big O of n. But if we take n inserts followed by n deletions, that's going to be big O of n, n over 2, on average. We want to do better than that. So binary heaps are an alternative that offers better average performance on those operations of inserting and removing from our priority queue. The basic idea to begin with is that I have a min tree or possibly a max tree. So the concept is that it's a binary tree. The root for a min tree will have the smallest value in the tree and every parent will be at least as small as both of its children. We can also have a max tree, in which case the root will have the largest element, and every parent is at least as large as both of its children. And we deal with both men trees and max trees because people express priorities in both directions. Sometimes the biggest value is the highest priority, sometimes the smallest value is the highest priority. So we want to be prepared to deal with either one of those. We're going to focus primarily on the minimum tree. So a minimum binary heap is going to be a min binary tree and a complete tree. So let's remind ourselves what we mean by a complete tree. So a complete tree is going to have everything filled in from left to right. So a tree with just a root is a complete tree. A tree with just the left hand child of the root, then the next one would go on the right of the root, the next one would be that far left of the second child. So each of these is a complete tree. If we skipped over any of these nodes, we would no longer have a complete tree. This complete tree is not going to have any holes as we work light from left to right going down. And so each of these would be a complete tree. Now when we think about a complete tree, one of the advantages of a complete tree is that we can use an array representation. We have typically the size of the tree in zero. We definitely want to start our root at index one because this simplifies all of the rest of our calculations a great deal. We can then find the children of any node at two times that node's index and two times that index plus one. So the root's children are at two and three. Two's children are at four and five. Three's children would be at six and seven. Of course, it doesn't have a child on the right-hand side at this point. If we had a very large tree, six's children would be at 12 and 13. So that's very easy. An advantage here is that we can also go the other way very quickly and easily. So if we wanted to find five's parents, we can simply divide five by two using integer division. So five divided by two will be two. Same for four. So we can easily get back and forth between parent, child, child, parent, very efficiently. A nice thing also about this array representation is that we can easily find where the last node is because it's going to be at the index that is the size of the tree. In this case, the 17 here at six is the last element in the tree. That's very useful to us in terms of working with our heaps and making sure that we maintain everything as a complete tree. 
So when we have heaps, we're always going to use the array representation. We're never going to try to do this in a linked form. Let's look at insertion here. I said this is going to be more efficient. The basic process, we're going to start by putting the value into the next location in the array and growing the size of the heap by one. We have added the three, put it in index seven, and updated our size to be seven since we now have seven items. Now, of course, that was not a valid heap because we had this three that's not a min heap because its parent was the 12, which is definitely not smaller than three. So what we're gonna do now, we percolate up, which means we compare to the parent and then swap if the parent is larger. In this case, the parent is definitely larger and we swap the three and the 12. But now we have to continue going because we need to check the next parent. So we compare to the six, the six is also larger than the three. And so we swap the three and the six, ending up with a valid heap. Let's think about the performance of insertion. It's constant time to insert the value at the end. We just look at the size, go to that spot in the array, insert that value, and of course, update the size. That was all constant time. Then we have to swap with the parent at most height of the tree minus one times. And we know that the height of the tree is log in because this is a complete tree. So this makes performance of insertion big O of log in, which is quite a bit better than n over two, especially as our priority queue gets large. So now let's look at the deletion, because of course in the list, we could have constant time on one side and big O of n on the other. We need to make sure we don't have any big O of n things going on here. So the way we're going to delete from a heap is similar to the idea of insertion, but of course also a little bit different. The item we want to delete here is the two. That's the root of the tree. And we always find the smallest value, the one we're looking to delete at the root. Now, one option we could imagine is that we could move the left side up or move the right side up, but we need to make sure we maintain this as a proper complete tree. It would be very hard to do that if we took an approach like that. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to replace the root value with the last value in the heap. And of course, we're reducing the size of the heap by one because we have one fewer, fewer item in it now. Now, just as with our insertion, we currently probably don't have a valid heap, unless the heap is very small. We almost certainly just messed it up. What we're going to do is a similar process to the percolate up process that we were doing with the insertion, but now we're gonna percolate down because instead of trying to move something up from the last spot, we're trying to move it down from the root. Now, if we're moving down, we have two possible places to go, and we need to make sure that the smaller of those is the one that goes up. So we start by comparing the children. Determine which of those is smallest, and then we compare the smaller child with the parent. If it's smaller than the children, then we're going to swap. So in this particular case, we're going to look at the 5 and the 7, which are the two children of the 12 the five is the smaller value. So we're gonna work with it. We compare it to the 12, and those do need to be swapped. And so we do that swap. And the five is now in place, it is the root of the heap. So the heap is not fully fixed yet. We need to check 12 children now. So its new children are the 15 and the 10. Compare those. The 15, of course, is actually larger than the 12, so it would be okay. But the 10 is the smaller value there. It is also smaller than the 12. So we have to swap the 10 and the 12. Now at this point, we would go on, but of course there are no more children here because 
5 times 2 is greater than the 6 that we actually have in the heap. And so we know we're done. So what about performance of deletion? This is very similar to the performance of insertion, just as the process has a lot of similarities. First, it's constant to swap with the last value and fix the size of the heap. Then we have to swap with a child at most height of the tree minus one times. Same as when we were going up, except that now we're going down. A little bit more overhead because we have more comparisons to make, but that's just a constant factor. And the height of the tree is big O of log n because it's a complete tree, same as before. So performance of deletion, we have big O of log n just like performance of insertion. So overall, instead of an order in average, we have a big O of log n average between those two. Now, of course, there is one other operation we're very, very interested in with priority queues, and that's just looking at whatever is at the front of the priority queue. What is that minimum value? So that's in the root, and that's constant time. So I hope you realize at this point that heaps make a very efficient version of a priority queue. However, heaps do have one major drawback, and that is that we often find ourselves with multiple items that have the same priority. And within those items that have the same priority, we typically want to maintain the first in, first out ordering that would go with a regular FIFO queue. Heaps won't do that for us. So if we're in the case of something like, here's a waiting list where most people should just go in order first come, first served, but certain people should get bumped to the front of the list, heaps are not going to be a good choice for that because heaps will not maintain that first come first serve ordering of the majority of our elements in the queue. However, there will be quite a few cases where it is a very positive addition to your tool set. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.